Welcome to this, my first review of a computer game. This is off Steam and it's called Rail Route from Bitrich Productions. And this uh, game is a few years old. I only found it recently in the Steam library. And it's what I would call a, a kind of pocket money game. So it only costs about £20, $30. 20 euros something like that so it's not massively expensive and it's basically a rail tycoon sort of game so the main parts are you have a map which in this case is munich and you have a set of money which you have to earn by running train contracts and you're building up xp at the same time two sorts of different xp as you raise money, that money is then available to build certain things, whether it's lines, whether it's buying up stations or, you know, as automation sensors and things like that. And slightly different menu here for buying the platforms and um, these little joining things, which are called auto blocks. The XP is used for upgrades. So within these screens, I've already upgraded uh, everything in the green section already in this particular game. And I haven't unlocked anything yet in red because I'm only just starting on this map. Now, the maps, you kind of get um, a whole range of them, really. So if I just go back to the main menu, when you start a new game, these are what they call the endless maps. So these are probably where you spend most of your time. And they have a different level of difficulty, which is the orange gauge here. So you can see some of them are rated as a five i think munich is probably a five wherever that is and uh, some of them are rated much more easily uh, some of them are big some are small so you see amsterdam it has 16 stations but it's rated five out of five probably because there's either a lot of traffic or the stations are very close together in the case of munich which i'm playing at the moment it's a very large map and it has something like 83 stations on it so it's this one here but it's not necessarily a five out of five because just because it's big but there's obviously a lot of traffic a lot of um, options available in that so these are endless maps you can also add your own so there is um, a map designer built in as well if you want to create your own you can save them online and other people can download them obviously the quality varies i downloaded one and yeah it wasn't really playable um because yeah it just wasn't wasn't really a very good map but those are available anyway uh, you can download them you can invent your own if you like then we have rush hour maps which are effectively a prescribed period of time so it might be like uh you know five minutes and then 10 minutes then 15 minutes and effectively each level all of them have um 10 levels i think and each level gives more trains and it's basically your job to get them through in as quick a time as possible without any delays. If you incur delays, then you don't score your full three stars. So these are kind of OK. They tend to run in a fairly short amount of time if you just want to have a quick game. But there's they're kind of limited because of for that reason, really. And then they've also split out uh, time um, the tutorials which come for each of the different things that you unlock in the upgrade menu so if you want to know what a relay sensor does then you can click on this and it will play you a map with a relay sensor and it'll kind of take you through clicking on the various things now i found personally that these tutorials weren't great some of them weren't so some of them skip over the sort of uh, functionality if you like quite quickly so i have made a series of videos on all of these uh, so that people who are maybe struggling to understand can go and watch those instead and then the last ones are timetable maps and this is where you don't have to accept any train contracts yourself they're automatically all set up and it's just your job to move things through so i had a go on uh, new york pen and because it's a timetabled map you can see it tells you how long it's going to take you to run this map and then if you get everything on time or almost everything on time, you'll get three stars. If you have a handful of delays, you get two and obviously one. You can see New York Penn's quite complex, whereas Wakefield, you can see it's quite simple. It's only got one um, coach, so it's quite easy. And, you know, again, 12 minutes. So if you've got 12 minutes spare, you could just run that. But if we go back into my current game, so I'm on this um, endless map here and this is the main playing screen so this is all you really see so you can go into a build menu you can go into the upgrade menu you've got things like a contracts manager 
the uh, settings and then um, I need to close that by the looks of it uh, and then a what they call an, an automatic contracts manager so it's just something to help you uh, when you're getting train contracts but you'll just spend all of your time pretty much on this one screen and as you can see this is a large map so you need it covers a, a really long area some maps will almost fit just in one screen size so it, they vary massively in terms of their size and their number of stations and the way it works is you usually start a map with maybe two or three stations connected already for you so when i started this map this station here this station and this station were joined with just a single piece of track and it normally gives you between four and six contracts automatically just for you to start playing and in the early days when you don't have enough money and you don't have any points you don't have any automation in place so when you start every single map for the first time you're clicking points uh, you're clicking signals and you're basically manually routing the trains from departure to destination you manually have to accept a train onto the map and if you're coming into a station that has more than one platform, you have to send it into the correct platform by hovering over the train, seeing which platform it's heading for and setting the routes accordingly. Now, that's obviously quite difficult to do at a large scale. So as you build up your first upgrades in the green section in different tiers, this is already unlocked and you get to pick a number of basic automation features that will make your job a little bit easier. And then once you get to 10 trains per cycle, which is one hour, then it will unlock tier two, which gives you kind of the rest of um, the sensors that you need, certainly to start building out your map. And then when you get to <clears throat> 25 trains an hour, it unlocks tier three, and that's where you get your routing sensor, which is kind of the last one that you really need. And it's also where you can unlock unlimited stations because until you've clicked on that, you are not allowed to buy more than initially four, I think, four stations. Then you can upgrade that to seven. And then I think it's 12. And then it's all of the rest of them. So it's really just a strategic game of learning when to upgrade and what to upgrade and how to spend your hard earned money. And as these build up, I mean, now that I've unlocked all of these, then the green XP are kind of irrelevant now because uh, there's nothing else to spend them on. But I will need to at some point unlock one of the red types of trains and then earn red XP to unlock the rest of the things that I haven't. So the way the game kind of plays out, really, you can run in real time. You can kind of speed it up. Obviously, you need all of your automation to be checked and working before you run too quickly. Otherwise, you might get a train hits a stops at a signal and then it will just sit there and you, you'll need to spot that and, and sort of unblock it and stuff. But in my case, all of the trains I'm running are all fully automated at the moment. So I can run at 25 times speed, which obviously build up my XP and my money more quickly. And you get offered contracts. That's where you make your money from, essentially. So you can see here, you have to build a building next to a station, like this one is a conductor office. So conductor office is for commuter trains, which are the little ones with a single arrow, and intercity trains, which is the one with a double arrow on it. And you'll be offered all different kinds of contracts to go from different stations to different stations, and they will all offer you different amounts of money. So you can see there, this particular commuter service is from Richtung Weilheim, which is down here up to the station and back again. And that's offering a not too bad 29,000, um, doesn't really have units, but I usually call them dollars. But if you look at say some of the intercity trains, which are currently being offered here, you can see that one, you could have up to a maximum of 115,000 per train. Um, although at the moment it will only offer me 65,800 because of the speed of the line. And these will be different. Some of them will be reasonable. Some of them will be complicated and not worth it. So you either choose to accept it by you click on it and it gets accepted. Or if it was one that you didn't want, you can uh, let me see if I get rid of one of these. I can right click it and it cancels it away, which leaves another gap for another contract to be offered. So it's a, just a case of deciding at this point in time, I have no trains at all running in this side of my map. Um, I'm, I've only got as far as here and everything's to the left. So initially I can kind of do whatever I want in terms of accepting trains, but obviously the more of them I accept, 
the more I then have to make sure that they don't conflict with each other and make sure that maybe my commuter trains here are not getting in the way of my intercity trains, which might be running on the fast lines here. So that's really the gist of the game. It's kind of addictive. I think I would say the, the headline good thing about this game is that it's easy enough to get started in it, but it's complicated enough to want to carry on playing it, which is, to me, every good game is you don't want it to be so difficult that you're like, I'll oh, forget it, I don't want to bother. And you don't want it to be so easy that once you've played it three or four times, you kind of think, yeah, it's not really worth it anymore. So you can start on a, a smaller, simpler map and kind of get used to the playability. Uh, and I've now gone crazy and gone to this um, kind of really big map, which I will do some tutorials on as well, because I've already learned some things that I think would be useful. But I think, yeah, that, that's kind of the good thing. In terms of things that are good about this game, other than the fact I think it's got probably got the balance right between making it easy to start with but difficult to, to master, I would say there are a good range of maps. I think there are about, um, was it 20 or so in the endless category? So I don't know if it says here how many there are. Um, but four times seven, so 28 or 27 maps which is pretty good. There's lots to choose from, lots of different difficulty levels, so that's good. Like I say, you can download maps from online and you can create your own if you want, so there's not really any complaints there about the number of maps. The rush hour ones, yeah, I kind of don't really enjoy them that much, um, although you do need to play these if you want to get one of your achievements, your Steam achievements, which is finishing a rush hour map with three stars. So... That's, you know, the only reason you might want to play uh, most of these. But as you can see, I think I've only actually played that one. And same with the timetable. You also get points for um, completing timetable maps. That was a long one. I thought I'd give that a go because it's, it's quite complicated, as you can see. But I managed to get two stars. Um, I think it's almost as good as I can get because it's so busy. So many timetable conflicts. That I don't know if it's even possible to get three stars on that one. But when you look at, say, the Gateway Station, which has only got... 12 stations instead of 175 uh, sorry trains 12 trains uh, only takes 23 minutes but easier to get three stars so they're kind of okay i think it's a good range of maps the map designer i had a little play but i think you need to kind of commit some time to to really do that and yeah the different types of um, trains as well i think the kind of gameplay is perhaps close enough to real life to appeal to people who enjoy trains so this isn't quite what a signaler or dispatcher would actually use in real life um, but it's kind of similar enough that i think there's that sort of interest level and um, so that's good as well and i think it's kind of good value for money like i say 20 pounds is sort of pocket pocket money really uh, i remember when you used to spend sort of two pounds on a cassette tape back in the 80s uh, and I think probably with inflation, £20 is probably about the equivalent of £2 in the 80s. So um, I think it's good value for money. So there's no real complaints there. Now, in terms of things that I think um, are sort of a missing or things that are maybe count against the game. The first one is that there isn't a multiplayer setting. And that's one thing that's been asked for a lot. I suspect it's probably quite complicated. But if you have, say, like a really big map like this, you might not really fancy investing your time to do it all by yourself. So maybe it'd be quite nice to have um, somebody else that you could team up with and say, well, can you look after this half of the map and I'll look after this half of the map, uh, maybe spending the same pot of money. I, I don't know. You could do things like that. Or you could even have competitive comp um, opponents that you could play against somebody else and maybe you're competing to see who's going to get the most money. So I think it's a couple of multiplayer options that are missing. Um, there are a couple of little sort of bugs and gotchas in here. So... They're things that you sort of learn about and they're not terrible. But for example, if you leave the simulation running like this and that train's going across here, if you build kind of upgrade the speed of the track while that train's crossing it, then it can the train can effectively crash into the track that you're building in the build menu. It is not really obvious that that's going to happen. Uh, and if that does happen, you actually end the game and you have to go back to your previous save position, which might be up to an hour earlier. Um, so that's a bit annoying. The other gotchas are things like there's a bug where these trains that are called urban transit trains, they're like maybe underground trains or rapid transit. 
Um, if you send them to a station at the edge of the map, uh, like these sync stations here, you can tell because I have a little icon to show it's going off the map. If you send a train into there, it won't reverse correctly to come back out again, um, which it should do really, but it doesn't. So you have to manually reverse it, which kind of means on a map this size, you can't send a transit train right to the edge of the map and back again um, at the moment. Hopefully they will fix that soon. So a couple of little bugs. Some of the tutorials are a little disappointing. So one of the reasons I've made um, the tutorial videos is because, you know, some of these are quite easy to understand and the tutorial's fine, but some of the more complicated ones like shunting commands and the shunting sensor, it kind of says, you know, click here, click here, click here, click here. And then that sort of says, yeah, that's it. That's all you need to know. And then, of course, when it actually comes to using it in, a, you know, a real map like this, you kind of say, well, I don't know how it's going to work in a station that's, you know, got lots of platforms or a station where I don't have much space or whatever it might be. So some of the tutorials could be with being a bit more complete. Um, one of them then, the maybe a, a fairly major one, is just the fact you've only got this one user interface. So, when, you know, you play something like um, Rail Grade, which is a sort of similar kind of, you know, build your railway and, and achieve goals sort of game. But you can do things like you could click on a train and hit, you know, do a camera on it. And, you know, you're kind of seeing some kind of slightly simplified real life graphics of it going along the tracks to the next station. Now, you know, something like that, that would be quite a big deal to implement in code, but it would add that little bit of extra interest where maybe you could click on a station and have maybe a simplified view of that station, seeing the trains arriving and leaving, or if there is a, a crash between two trains, which is possible, that maybe it kind of replays it with a kind of a real life kind of looking crash rather than just the, the graphic of two trains crashing. So I think they could do a little bit more with the interface because otherwise it's a little bit kind of boring to look at the same thing all the time. And then the last one, which is kind of a, a minor complaint, is probably par for the course, really. But you can get offered up to six contracts at the same time. So if I'm interested in some more trains from um, passing Betriebsbahnhof, I think that says, you can choose which ones of these you do or don't want. But sometimes you get kind of really crazy ones that you think, well, that's not really very practical, like... It might be from here over to some random station up here and then back down to here or something. Um, and so you do have to spend quite a bit of your time sort of going, oh, no, that's not reasonable. That's not reasonable. Oh, but that one is. Um, and then, yeah, you can you can choose the ones that you want in some maps. I don't know if it's the same every time you play, but you might find that like every freight train wants to go to, you know, what's that called? Like Moussac, or, for example, and you might say, well, again, if my freight trains are down here, getting them round to there is going to be really difficult or even impossible. So you end up cancelling a lot of contracts that are that are unreasonable. But that seems to vary a little bit on the map. So I'm going to maybe um, hold, hold fire for that. So, yeah, in summary, I like the game. I think it works well, apart from a few little bugs. I think it's kind of addictive and I think as long as they keep producing maps and maybe a few more features, one feature that would be good would be the ability to take the locomotive off of the front of a train that's come into a dead end station like this and put a different loco on the back of it. At the moment, the only thing you can do is you can take a locomotive off, run it round a different platform and back in again, which is fine if you've got space. But if you look at this here with the dashed lines, there is no space to do that on any of these platforms. So what it would mean is you have to reverse a train out somewhere in order to turn it round, which isn't that realistic. So I think if they released a couple more features and a few more maps, I think this has got a few more miles on it yet. Um, and so, yeah, I think for me, thumbs up. I would say if you're not really into trains that much, it's very much geared towards trains rather than general strategy, like maybe rail grade is more of a general purpose game. But... If you don't, if you're not really into trains that much, I think you'll probably get bored quickly. Um, so, yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy it. But stay tuned. I will add the tutorial videos. And like I say, if you're stuck on any of the particular upgrades here and you need to know how to use them, then stay tuned for those. And otherwise, have a great time. And any questions or comments, please put them below.